when the evil of night descends the land with completion in order this hexed of signs mark the beginning of the great conjunction in the house of thirst the ghosts unborn through life unlife unliving shall scorn The soon drowned child of Bistani descent either feeds or denies the great serpent. Waiting for years, devil's son will rise to stand up against evil. Curse breakers arrive. The light of night shining over the dead will shutter and fail turning all to red Inahira will make his fortunes reverse dooming all to live forever cursed the bodiless shall journey to the time before where happiness to hate creates land and law. Beware the Dukar, for he and he alone may bring these six signs destroying our home. Last time! On D&D. And I After being transported by Azaline the Lich in a deep, dark, mist-filled bone, bone graveyard, the party falls into the midst of a horde of zombies. In the city of Velaki, being attacked, made it through this horde of zombies with the help of the guards. Barely. Ran south and the city was overtaken again. Same thing that happened earlier to the party, but you guys see a different point of view. You see women and children being ripped from their homes, fathers dying for their family, guards weakly defending their city. You guys eventually make it to the church of Velaki. Bartholomew and El, you've been living in this church for the last year, and it's become your home. After a short confrontation with Strahd von Zarovich, it's nothing more than dust. An ash. An ash. This weighs heavy on both of your hearts. Lightning streaks across the sky. It starts raining. The moon was red, and now it's just a full-ass moon beaming down on all of you guys. Again, the moonlight beams down on a burned church. And actually, all of these bats are gone. Bartholomew, you are leaning over your friend L who got his throat bit out and he lay dying in your arms. What do you do? I cast the wounds at a fifth level. At fifth level. Magically, L, go ahead and describe what happens. Well, I do. I just feel like, uh, I feel chords start to reconnect which where they were lost. Like no, I can speak again. And like all the gurgling of like blood and stuff that was like filling my nut uh, lungs, like slowly starts to like evaporate like a steam as this starts to just like come back together. <laughs> like you saved my life. <laughs> The rain beats down on all of the back of your necks. 
steam coming comes off Dragar as he morphs back into human form. What do you guys do? You guys are kind of just catching your breath and you're in the front of this church that is destroyed. Like how bad is it? Is it super bad or is it fixable? Like what's the damage here? Oh, it's completely destroyed. Oh, fuck. Strahd casts like two huge fireballs. That's a shape. Fireballs and, you know, completely destroyed. All of the civilians inside of it, everyone that you've become friends with and swore to protect was hiding in this church and all of your belongings because you yourself lived in this church. Bartholomew, or no, L. As you lay there, you kind of get pulled up by Bartholomew. But as he reaches out his hand and you take it, all of the light turns to a complete gray. Mist surrounds you. You're in a field by yourself. Bartholomew is not there. No one is. You hear in your mind, I can give you what you want. <laughs> Echoes all around you. Wait. You were given a curse. Though you are not dead, the venom is still in your veins. This voice is coming from all around you, below you, and everything. I need a constitution saving throw, please. I've got uh, immunity to disease and poison, I believe. Actually, no, I can purge all poison, any poison. So... Then try to do it, fool. I use Wait. my healing reservoir, like my 30 HP reservoir, and I uh, yeah, use five to try and purge it. Okay, you heal yourself five, but when you do it, you can't use magic. Wait. Your magic doesn't work. I am in control here, mortal. Now, what do we do about the elemental? I s Are you speaking of the void? Whatever the fuck you call it. We need to purge it if we're going to form an alliance. Where do you come from? <laughs> All of a sudden, a little girl walks out, and you know this girl. This little girl lived at the church. And you kind of bonded with this little girl. You felt like an older brother to her. Like Maria. No. Maria's just standing there, her hair in her face. She's looking down, and her skin looks deathly white. Has she crossed over yet? She reaches out her hand and motions for you to come closer. As you do, you approach. I don't know. You quickly look around, L, and you're completely surrounded, with nothing but mist. It swirls before your very eyes, and you can see skeletal hands grasping towards you, and skulls everywhere you look. Is this the horseman? Yeah, I'll take your hand. As you approach, the little child starts speaking. This is my deal. And this is coming from the little girl. You give me the spot on the throne of Argenvast. You destroy all of those paladins. This little girl flips her hair out of her out of her face and she is just completely dead. Her eyes are completely white and she, her skin is all veiny and nasty. She looks like she's been dead for years. Her long black hair 
comes back down over her face as her, like, demonic f fangs keep speaking. So, do we have a deal? Might I, might I remind you? You will die in two days' time. But I could save you. Just accept my offer. She reaches out her hand. Do we have a deal? Well, I do. You've got a deal, but what do I have to destroy again? The bones of what? Okay. There is a skull of an ancient dragon. You must find it and destroy it at all costs. As you reach and shake her hand, you wake up and Bartholomew is pulling you off the ground and you and you are just now with Bartholomew. And Bartholomew, you just picked up L off the off the ground. And now he's kind of looking at you weird. You guys all you guys all are kind of just standing here. And what do you guys do? Out here. Fucking useless undead. They murdered these people. They took over this town. I hate this fucking realm. As you guys kind of turn and look around, Trefor, you were looking at the bats that were looming over the city. The vampires. Your eyes look to the, to the night sky, towards the full moon. And your eyes lock onto the moon. Uh oh. And I, I look. I look at. I look over at Trevor. And I was like, "Oh, son of a bitch, Trevor, look away." I try and pin it. I, I go over to him and try and keep his head pin his head towards the ground. Trevor, Trevor. As soon as you look at Trevor, he. You look at his face, and his eyes are white. And his Clint and his teeth are clenched and he's staring blankly at the moon and all of a sudden <laughs> he starts bulking up and like every shake he just his mass just grows every single time he just starts growing and as he like starts growing Trevor, your fangs start stretching out. You can feel your jaw breaking. Snap, snap, as your snout like extends. You're in like immense pain. You feel like your skin is just on fire as all of your skin is literally ripping out of you and you're just growing tufts of hair as you like, as your feet stay, like break out of your boot. Everything, you're just in complete chain. Uh, transformation pain as you just explode and now you're just this giant ass werewolf and you just roar what do you do Trevor the werewolf do I have control you, you turn around and you look all you can see is nothing but meat and you're starving what do you do I chase after that other werewolf okay he immediately charges towards your werewolf Percy um, what does your werewolf do Charge at the other werewolf while doing that. Uh huh. I cast <laughs> uh, armor of Agathis on him. Okay. Uh, my is like a solid uh, sheet of like kind of shadow ice encasing it. Uh, and then like you kind of just see the ice, like it's so cold coming off of it, it's like uh, nitric, you know, like just like steaming off, but it's ice steaming off. And he's just running full like fucking glass with the other werewolf. Damn. Damn. Okay, so Trefor's Trefor the werewolf just comes and clashes with this with Percy's so, uh, werewolf. As soon as he, as soon as he hits, uh, I would think maybe like a roll against to see if like the ice is gonna like I don't know, rip up his attack or if he can like puncture it. Okay, so as you guys clash, you, you guys just see these two giant werewolves just <laughs> and launch at each other. You guys start scratching at each other. Go ahead and roll strength. See who blasts each That's other boy. off. Just... Callan, what do you do? You see this going down. Yep. 18. So it's your strength. He got an 18. I'm going to cast Dominate Person. Um, um, you're, okay, you cast a spell? No, no. I'm just going to stand there and watch. Okay, you, you try casting a spell and you decide not to. What was your strength roll, Strong? Natural 20. 
Trying to shout. Oh damn! Okay, damn. Okay, so you guys just clash with these werewolves, and and Callan, we flash over to Callan, and Callan's like about to cast a spell, and he just sees this werewolf get taken out by this other werewolf, and they just slash, and they just start slashing at each other, like right in front of the fence. Okay, Percy, what do you do? Actually, you already went. Bartholomew. Would I know greater restoration heals a werewolf curse or destroy curse, whatever? Try it. You run up. What do you do? You run up and you start you you speak these words and all a bright light starts emitting off of your your hand as you run to run up and try to heal this thing. As soon as you touch it, a blast of black energy just explodes you and you go flying like twenty five feet back and you go tumbling over yourself. You take fifteen damage. As as Trevor the werewolf just <laughs> explodes and slash slashes at these other two werewolves. These two werewolves are just slashing at each other, ripping each other a fucking part. L, what do you do? What do you do? He said dispel magic. What do you do? Sorry, L. Uh, I cast Dispel Magic. Okay, is- nothing works. It didn't work. Dispel does not work. It fizzles out. Next, okay. Dragar, what do you do? Okay, what about Strong's 20 on the world? Did it knock him back? Yeah, he overpowered him. Now they're just sitting there slashing and tearing each other apart. I cast Moonbeam, I cast Moonbeam on Trevor and only Trevor in Florida. Damn, okay, roll against me. Ready? Yep. Um, 17, what do I add? Did my spell save? Where's the spell time? That's 20, unnatural. He got a 23. Alright, then as a bonus action, I turn into a cave bear form. Alright. To, uh, to try and grapple him. Okay, uh, Trefor, what do you do, bud? I, I look over. And I see, and I see it. Speaking to the mic. I look over and I see Dragar turning into a bear form, and I st- I sit down and start whimpering. You whimper. Okay, roll against me. See if your primal fury overpowers you because you try to wimp out, but your primal fur- fury might not allow it. Roll. Nine. I got a nine. Oh my gosh. Dude, are you serious? I'm failing. Oh, you're failing. <laughs> there we go. You got a nine, Trefor? Mm-hmm. Alright, he got an eleven. So you you the inside of you, you're terrified, Trefor. You've never transformed into your vampiric beast or into your lycanthropic form before. But the power is overwhelming and you can't even contain your hunger as you chump and you lo- and you let go of the other werewolf and you plunge towards uh, Dragar, the freaking bear as you guys start wrestling each other again strength check oh god both of you guys just clash into each other Callan, what do you do? ooh, two that's four, I got six okay, you cast hold monster, roll against me what was your roll, Dragar? I'm uh, 19 alright, you overpower him by a lot uh, can I try and, like, knock him out? And I overpower, so he goes, uh, reverts back to human form. Alright, you try to overpower him. Cal- Callan, what was your roll? Total of 16. Nice. So, Callan, you actually take control of this monster, which allows Dragar to overpower him. Callan, you kind of have con- control of this monster. You can feel like, you can pull off his strength and shit. What do you do as you have, as you play with the strings? I just hold him there until somebody can figure out how to transform him back. It's okay, like Dragar, you overpower this thing and you can feel it resisting you. What do you do as you gain strength over this thing in just full bear form? Just knock him out and try and put him back in human form. That's all I'm gonna do is just knock him out and hold him. Okay, you just punch him. You just throw ahead and you just throw ahead and punch, and he just bites onto your fucking fist and just starts okay. chewing your chewing your fist. You're gonna go ahead and take six damage. All right, okay. Percy, your turn. Grappling with the bear, I'll have him jump onto the back of um, Trevor 
hand uh, bite into like his uh, back of his neck to like kind of get a good grip on him. Dang, right. Trevor, roll perception check. Percy, I need you to roll against me. See, ooh, natural one. Okay, it already happened. You guys see? Go ahead and describe what happens, Percy. Natural one. Uh, my werewolf seen, like I see the opportunity, so I telepathically communicate with the werewolf to jump on to uh, Trevor's back and to pin him down further, and to like literally lock jaw into the back of his neck so he can't move. Dang! As you guys have Trevor the werewolf just pinned down, you can feel him resisting you, but you guys feel that you can overstrength him. Well, that's too small. Okay, Bartholomew, what do you do? You just got you just got launched, dude. Your back is completely like twisted. You stand up, you're like, oh, you have a completely sore back. And when you stand up, all your bones start popping. What do you do? I'm gonna hop on my over there. I'm gonna cast greater restoration. I'm gonna see if that one works. You cast greater restoration. <laughs> okay, what do you do? How do you how do you cast it? Well, he's being held down, right? Yep. I'm gonna run up to him. I'm gonna fucking grab his feet so he can't bite me. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Trevor, I need a perception check. Bartholomew, I need a dexterity to see if you can grab this werewolf as he's like held down, but he's still slashing and can feel like he can probably break out. He's resisting hardcore. It's too I told you, it's too 12? Okay, you manage to grab onto this werewolf as you, like, cast this spell. And as you, like, grab onto it and cast your spell, and, and I just said that twice. <laughs> the fucking magic, like, dispels his lycanthropy. So, greater restoration, you keep this out when you're seeing stuff with that happening. Um, yeah, you don't really know what happened. But a very dark energy repelled you. The greater restoration. Greater restoration is the one that root that worked, right? Yeah, pretty sure that's where you're going with that one. Yeah, but lesser didn't. I used greater. I know. Remember, the first one you used was lesser, right? First one you used was remove curse. Oh, that's what it was. So, I'm going to be very clear, though. Like, in Barovia, it doesn't really... Like, so you didn't remove his lycanthropy. You just you just diffused his transformation. It. Yes. You just brought him back to human form. I've been forgetting fucking... Um, Piddlewick. Okay, this next part should be badass. That... I completely just came out of my ass. The whole ass, Trev. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go get a drink and then they should be back by then. I just want you all to know right now that that was only because of his Dukar energy. The Necroblast that dispelled with your magic, the fact that I had him pinned just for him to fight me, the werewolf had him pinned, the old monster had him pinned, the Moonbeam should have turned him back to human. That was Dukar energy, my friends. You know what that means? I mean, he just tried to eat us, Jim. He took a bite out of my freaking face. That was your hand. Okay, true that. I'm sorry. I took a bite out of somebody's face a few minutes ago, though. It was one of the vampires, I think. Right. Is Ross there? Yeah, he's right here. We're all here. Oh, okay. So, you said you would know that that didn't cure him indefinitely, but it's a temporary solution, basically. I think that would be able to know that. Yes. That okay. Yes. And I was telling them, too, do you guys miss that? Uh, when Bartholomew will cast the spell, he could tell that he didn't take away his lycanthropy, but he just dispelled the transformation. 
for now. So, okay. <clears throat> I kind of... I Trefor, you... Trefor, you just feel... You just feel absolutely nothing. You're asleep. I pick him up by the scruff of his shirt like a bear carrying a cub, making sure his head's laying down, and I just start walking away, and I'm carrying him. I don't know. Okay. All right, everyone... Everyone pause. Trefor. All right, Trefor. What? Up. What? Yeah, let's do it. Trefor, you lay there right. in darkness. I'm trying to talk, but you guys keep talking. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Trefor, you lay there in darkness. You look up. And you can see yourself as a child. A baby. Your mother, you presume to be your mother, you get a ge very gentle, warm feeling from her. Is holding you, washing you in the river. When your father, who you now know is Aragal, storms up. He has long hair. He has a fancy mustache. And he's pissed off. It's all inaudible. But we all see their, mo their mouths moving. Yelling at each other. You see that Trefor's father and mother start fighting as the baby gets flung into the river and splashes in the water. Next we see a series of the baby floating down the river over like a small little ravine where the baby washes up on shore presumably dead, waterlogged, and it's honestly really sad. Moments later, we see a form, a hooded form, walk up. And it's an old lady, Madame Eva. Madame Eva? Madame Eva caresses you. She passes your hand over your body and her eyes roll into the back of her head. And a bunch of crazy rune symbols appear around all of you. And then you hear a baby start screaming and whining and kicking. Trefor, you wake up at this moment and Dragar has you flung over his shoulder and he's just in bear form. You can just feel his fur, it's all rough. And it's all like, and it's like, and it's all muscly and shit. Right about here, Dragar, you pick up Trefor, and he's in he's butt ass naked. <laughs> and he's uh and he's just on your shoulder. What do you guys do? Uh I I'm up so I smack Dragar's back and I'm like, put me down! I, I, I just fling him off and let him fall on the ground naked. I don't care anymore now that he's awake. <laughs> <laughs> and then I roar at him to make sure he doesn't look up at the sky. Like, I kind of lean his head down a little bit, just not hurting him, just to kind of pin his face and looking towards the sky, you know? Trefor, you can't help it but look through Dragar's hand, and you look at the moon again, <laughs> and you look at it, and nothing happens, but besides in the pit of your stomach, you feel... It's... It's a very primal feeling that you've never felt before, but this full moon beaming down on you, it makes you feel so good. A full moon. It's like a f cold, it's as fresh as a f fresh drink out of a frozen river in the middle of winter. It cools your entire body. It's home. But ass naked Trefor is sitting there he has a weirdly huge ass. It's like actually kind of nice. It's weird. It's like uncomfortable for everybody. <laughs> Dragar tosses you a ro like a robe, like his like his robe, and you kind of cover yourself. And now you, this robe is just way too big for you. I go and pick up my weapons. You pick up your weapons, but all of your clothes ripped and are in shreds uh, right right about here and uh but not your cape i'll give you i'll give you your your cape that cool cape kind of just fell off the so you kind of tie up your cape 
Oh, as all this is, as all, yeah, his armor, all of his clothing and shit ripped. So you, but you got your weapons. L, I need a perception check from you, please. All right. First off, you're blind as shit. <laughs> so, you barely see it. You don't know what it is, but you see a movement um, behind the gate over here. Right here. Um, what do you do? I go over to investigate... Yeah, I'm going to roll investigation. Okay. Nine. You run over to the gate, and you're kind of like looking around, and the gate is locked. And before you is a giant cemetery. It's way bigger than what the map is right here. Like, this cemetery is huge. Like, the biggest cemetery you've ever seen. There's like rolling hills, and... Mm. All of the hills are spotted with stone graves of the long lost dead. There's huge, um, like, you know those huge angel fucking statue things? I forget what they're called. Like crypts or like a tomb, I guess. Let's call them crypts. You can see various, you can see various big crypts. All of them with statues broken. And that's all you kind of see. But... What about right about here? What do you guys all do? I'm up above. Oh, is he always stuck in that? Should be running off by himself. What about you guys? I yell. Uh, can we hurry up and find me some clothing? This robe is too big. It's like wearing a dress. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you guys can look for clothing, but what are those two uh, strangers doing? I will drop naked. Trevor, you look around and. The city of Velaki is a burning nightmare. You couldn't imagine a fucking shop being open. At first off, at one o'clock in the morning, a full ass moon, and half of the city is on fire. The other half of the city is crumbled to dust. Oh, so it's like the US right now. <laughs> you know what's weird? I feel like the real world might be worse than Barovia, which is saying something. Yeah. Uh, that at least are currently. There any, are there any enemies on the ground? Dragar, you're in like bear form, so you like, what do you what do you kind of do? You like kind of just looking around, just, <sighs> just kind of breathing heavy as this giant fucking bear is just like kind of prowling amongst you guys. Okay. You go towards the gate and sniff it out a little bit. All right, you walk through the gate. How long does your transformation last? Uh, I think a while. I think it's like. A, Oh, okay. Okay, cool. I was just, I was just sure. Okay, what about you guys? Do you guys follow or what? Sure. Okay, you guys come up to a locked gate. And I busted through it. Okay, I was gonna describe the beautiful intricacies of it. You, you start, you start looking at the gate, and there's these really cool designs. And right as soon as you start to look at them. A fucking bear just comes and just bursts the fucking gate open and just completely destroys the fucking thing and just rips it off. You guys can look. You you guys look over at Trefor and he's just like shaking his head, like laughing, like fucking Dragar. Okay, as you guys walk in to this huge cemetery. I'm actually, I'm hoping that I'm like, oh, sir, that's not a good idea. There's a uh, undead around these parts. If you don't know, you might have just opened. The gate for them. <laughs> I just look L. at him like L. Everything I just look at him like L, right at this moment, I need another perception check. Um Bartholomew, you would might see this as well. Roll roll for me as well. What the fuck is this dice? Holy shit. Ten. I hate this dice already. Okay. L uh, you see oh. L and Bartholomew, actually. You guys both see this. In the graveyard, there's hundreds, if not thousands, of graves. Silent is an understatement. 
As you step in the dead grass, the dead leaves echo off of the stone remembrances. When a white cloth catches your eye, L, and it's a little girl leaning up against a huge cross stone grave, and it's Maria looking at you. And I need a wisdom save from you. I don't know. We just made her up. She's just some important chick that he kind of fell in love with at the church. He feels like a brother to this little girl. Why is he this too, right? I see the girl? Yeah. You get... Oh, right at this moment, L, you have no choice but you, like the this brotherly nature that you have for this girl you know you helped her with her chores and she helped you you know like you just kind of almost raised this poor little girl and you have no other feelings in your very being besides to help her you know all of these thoughts the burning church behind you you thought for sure that she probably died but yet you see her before your eyes. As she notices you take a couple steps towards her, she turns and runs farther into the graveyard. And at this very moment, Dragar, a clenching around your fucking arm, it like clenches like the hardest bite you've ever had in your life. You're gonna go ahead and take seven damage. You're just roaring from pain as this huge metal dragon statue forms onto your bear and like you can see it's just this crazy green light coming off of this of the phylactery and it's just completely overtaking dragar and it like uh, this huge green light overtakes dragar's arm and over his whole entire body and all of a sudden he just shrinks and shrinks and shrinks back down to human form dragar you stand there and your the phylactery it's like bitten it's like his neck came back up and is like biting on your arm and it's squeezing as tight as it can as a matter of fact you're, you have blood your blood's starting to drip like your, your blood's starting to drip off your arm as this thing's squeezing like and you're, you can feel your arm about to fucking snap that's how crazy hard it is and you're just glowing with this crazy ass light that's emanating from this phylactery and you guys all see this see this phylactery just do this to Dragar. I don't want to take that off Dragar, you're, you're trying to rip this fucking thing off, and it's a part of you. You literally can't even get it to budge a tad. You want me to, like, cut your arm off? I can do that. <laughs> I'll choose quick. Do it! Okay. Uh, I'm like, hold on, hold on, sir. I think I... I about. Dragar, as soon as he's about to cut it off, it loosens its grasp. And then slice. You you just no longer feel any part. You feel your fingers no longer there. As you look right in front of you, Percy slashed off your fucking arm. Where did you slash it off at, Percy? Wherever the black is. So like like above the elbow, elbow or or below the elbow. Where does it where does it hit? It? it likes it's like around his whole forearm and his wrist. I guess at the elbow. Okay, you just slash right at your fucking elbow, Dragar. And now you're just missing a fucking arm as your arm with the phylactery wraps up and is just laying there on the ground. I produce it up. Um, Percy, go ahead and roll 3d6. Okay. I uh, produce 20 on my arm to cauterize the wound. When I feel like this pain, can I counterspell it all? When you see his pain? No, no, when I feel the pain that I'm about to take. Um... No, he's going to take pain. You just cut off his uh, arm. I was picturing you just slashed it. 13. What, the phylactery? No, I slashed off his elbow and picked up the phylactery. Okay, so pause. This is just you slashing Dragar's arm off. Oh, okay. So yeah, that was 13 damage. You take 13 oh, damage, God. Dragar, as your arm falls to the ground. Percy, you immediately pick up the... Phylactery? Yeah. I yell, don't touch 
Watch that! As soon as you reach to grab it, it like wiggles around and it like comes to life. It's just this little baby dragon. And then it launches and latches onto Dragar's fucking leg. Chop his leg off. Well, we know we got to do this. Dragar, this... I grab my arm. I grab my arm. I'm pissed off. I put it back against it. And immediately I cast... Your wounds. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Dragar, you guys, you guys see, you guys just see Dragar pick up his fucking arm and put it on the end of his elbow. Go ahead and roll against me. For a second, you it feel like it doesn't work. You might have put it on a little weird, but then you feel the grooves of your elbow and you put it back in there, and you can you heal your arm. But you can feel that that arm is super fucking weak now. Okay. I'm gonna go up to him. You have. What the fuck is wrong with you guys? It's just latched onto your leg at the moment. I talk to Jake and I go, yeah, shit's weird, man. I turn into a giant owl sometimes. Yeah, so you turn into your Raven Hulk? Sorry, but our horror movie. Our horror movie. Sometimes I turn into a giant owl. It's fucking weird. Uh, Jake, Jacob, I heal you for 4 D6 damage. That's good. I'm completely healed now. Thank you. You cast remove curse. Go ahead and use a spell slot. I did. And again, a black fucking energy just coalesces in your mind. And now it's your fucking head. You just have an ama- like immense headache. You feel your spell disapparate in your hand. And then your nose just starts bleeding immensely. And you can't even help it. You can't even stand up. You actually drop to your fucking knees, dude. And there's just this... You have a fucking amazing ass migraine right now. It's the worst headache you've ever had in your life. Go ahead and take 15 damage. Okay, why is on the ground in pain? I walked up. I'm like, hey, so I got some like a remedy for that. It helps these guys out. I picked up these really helpful uh, like healing torques, like you know, torque is like a thing that you put on your arm. I picked it up in one of the churches, and it'll think it help you out with that headache you got. A healing what? Oh. It's like an arm bandage you put on. Like no, thank you. Last hour, oh, man, I saw Gator Man's arm. Can I uh, can I use persuasion on him? Can I, like, persuasion roll? Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, insight? When I use insight, roll against me. Yeah, with insight. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're fucked. I'm fucked, actually. Huh. <laughs> God. I rolled a 14 plus 9, so 20. Oh, I have 4 plus 9. I rolled 11. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you take my lovely armband. Like, I guess it can't hurt, and I'll put it on the armband. Bartholomew, it's very weird. You actually, uh, as, as Percy's holding out this band of metal that he procu procured out of his person, you look around and you notice that Dragar has one on his arm. Callan has one on his arm. And Trefor has one on his as well. Which convinces you and makes you feel a little bit more confident and Dragar is like kind of looking at you like with an understanding and you look at Callan and you can see in his dark deep fucking where whatever raven hulk thing that you're kind of looking at right now that you can see his bulging ass muscles he's just this it's kind of nasty you look over at Callan actually and it's like you see this huge fucking beak you know what an owl bear is yeah. So it looks like that. It's huge. It's like way bigger than a grizzly bear. And he has like patches of fucking feathers like coming off of him. It's actually really grotesque. And he's just bulge ass huge muscles. He looks like fucking Hulk, honestly. And you, But you look and you can see that he's not in pain. And he also has a bar on his arm. Which convinces you. And as you take it and you latch it onto your arm. It's just like, go ahead and describe what it looks like, Percy. It's actually very plain looking. This looks kind of like a copper band. It, you just, it has one open end, and when you put it on, it just kind of forms around whatever arm. And inside. as you, and as, as so, it's the strangest thing, and as soon as you snap it on there, your headache is immediately gone. And you kind of come to, because you were just, you could only see blackness in this immense headache. As you kind of like, oh, and you stand up, and you're just, everything's kind of dizzy. It was very weird. You like wipe your nose, and your nose was bleeding like profusely. Dragar, at this very moment, yeah, you notice everyone has one, and L, you notice everyone has one as well. Um, at this very moment, Dragar, your leg starts to glow, and it's weird. There's like an arrow coming off of it. It's like a, it's like a, a light pointing, and it's pointing directly into the cemetery, into the cemetery. Ah, uh, so do I need to chop off the leg this time? Like, and, then, and then take it like away from you? So, you know what I mean? Like, and then we'll like take it away, and then we'll get it really. Oh, put it in my bag. There we go. We'll cut off his leg. I grab the flag tree, and I shove it in my bag of holding. Yeah, there we go. That's a good plan. At this, at this very moment, at this very moment, the phylactery grabs onto you, climbs up his thigh, and wraps itself like a belt around you, around your waist. And locks onto its tail. Damn it. Okay, okay, okay. God Different damn idea. It. Different idea. I dimension door your midriff only for a split second. God damn it. And then I undimension door it, but I keep the belt in the dimension. <laughs> Roll persuasion. But that might kill you. Roll persuasion. Okay. No, fuck this shit. I'll just go in the graveyard. Dragar, roll insight. God damn it. <laughs> Terrible fucking idea. Mine's a 17. Yeah. Why do you Fine guys think like that? Jagar, it seems to make sense in your brain. I'm saying the plan, I'm like, well, it might kill him. So, you might need a better plan. Okay, or here's an idea. How about I just go, go, go on ahead? Whatever this thing's going to make me do. Oh, anyway, go on ahead. What do you mean? Okay, so wait, we all just go to the graveyard. Okay. I can bring if we him back. Can armor for the kid. What'd you say, Bart? If he uh, dies, I can bring him back. As long as he dies. Hopefully. Know, yeah, you know, I kind of push my luck with my arm. I think his soul is locked to some guy. I've got a plan. Okay, let's do this. Right, it's a lot free found. I can enlarge or reduce any object as long as I can. Yeah. Anything I can see. I can't stop thinking about the thing that's too sad about every 
Okay. L, you walk up and put your hands on this dragon, and it like sends shiv like spikes this cold energy off of this belt, which like like tickles your hand as you like kind of grasp onto it, and you're trying to enlarge it. You can feel your spell st starting to take hold when all of a sudden this super black energy just expels off of it and you go flying back 15 feet and you crash into a wall you go ahead and take 10 damage okay and it's crazy there's like a hiss like a smoky hiss and at the very top of the smoke is just this skull that floats and disapparates into nothing Dragar. Dragar again you look towards the cemetery, and there's just this red beam directing directly into the cemetery, and you actually feel like a pull towards this. You've never felt this kind of energy towards you, but you know that, yeah, that's, yeah, it, that's what, like, all, like, it's very, like, it, like, attracts you in. All right, well, I guess we'll just try and solve it the old supernatural way. Solve Sorry. it of a bit. I'm like, I should warn you. They're, they're for sure. They're quite undead. Well, worst case scenario, we just, you know, run away. Yeah. So, that's not the worst case scenario. <laughs> we are surrounded, we die. No. Hey, I we're mean, not gonna I mean, die. I mean, I've got a bunch of I can turn into animals and fly away. I can turn into a raven and fly. So, I would say that, I would put my shield in my feet, I'm going to cast Levitate on it, and use its Levitation then for riding on the hoverboard. Okay, then we're good. We're Damn it, badass. Alright, can, can I have a turn to talk? You can talk. Lean yeah, lean forward in the mic. Well, yeah, Trev. well, we're not going to die, and if we do end up, hopefully it's you guys. Oh! That's where you're wrong. I, I, I gently nudge him and just get out of my way as I push forward. <laughs> you guys are basically used to the Dakar's nonsense at this point. You really, what's, you really want to be... You really want to... Time to solve another mystery. As you guys walk into the graveyard, again, <laughs> silence is an understatement. As you guys approach, Dragar, you quickly follow this beam of light which gets brighter and brighter when you get to the center of the cemetery there's this huge hill that you come up on and it dips way down below into a very shadowy little indent in the earth again there's graveyard grave there's graves everywhere and at the very base of this in, of this decline this hole is a huge angel statue has like crazy like huge wings and it's standing with its hand up as if it's like holding something up and as you guys as you guys approach the angel has like a dark entrance below below it and it descends into stairs uh, go ahead and roll an intelligence for me. <coughs> okay, so it's not like you know the name of it or of anything, but Bartholomew, you know, bless you, you know that there's a certain crypt that is very creepy sometimes you guys had to like clean the graveyard and you know kind of keep it maintained and stuff and occasionally there would be a zombie actually that you would have to destroy you know barovia same old same old barovia as you and there's this certain crypt that you guys are approaching and it always gave you really weird feelings but you never really got too close to it until this very moment now that you and it's actually a very beautiful grave this it's a it's a robed skeleton with like huge wings coming off of its shoulders. Its robe is blowing in the wind of, 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 of eternity. And it's under the, under the hood, you can just see the jawbone and teeth of a skull. And, it's, and again, its arm is like up. 
like towards the sky almost, as if accepting a gift from the heavens. Can I use my spell Legend Lore, which tells me important facts about things? I can think about it and see it or touch it. Okay, use the spell slot. Right, it's my last and fifth. Oh, okay, Bartholomew, you use Legend Lore. And in your mind, you sort of focus on this ancient burial ground, and you know its history. You recall a book in the church of Velaki you stumbled upon and read briefly, but it was scary, terrified you. You read of an ancient lich named Azaline Rex. He was a prisoner in these lands three, four hundred years ago, and Strahd made him his slave. You know that this is like a long time ago, there was an old cult that worshipped Azaline, and you recall from that book that this was the crypt that they built for Lord Azaline Rex, Darth Lord, De Death Lord of Darkon. I'm going to turn to uh, the one with the philanthropy thing. I can be like, you wouldn't happen to have uh, turned into a lich recently, would you? That's the reason I'm stuck to this stupid philanthropy. Yeah. That's really hot. Um, <laughs> but okay, I'll keep God out here so nothing follows you in. So follows you in. So we're going to by ourselves dealing with that one. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, like, well, it, it might be safer to stay as a group, don't you think? Like, because out here you can end up being attacked all by yourself. So maybe you should just run away. Persuasion. Sure. That's like, where I'm like, like, dude, we can't leave them now. What are we going to go back to? And I told her, sir. We have to keep going. If she's anyway possible connected to this, like, dude, we've got to bring her down. <laughs> okay, so we have two minutes left in this meeting, okay? So, um, as you guys kind of study this fucking crypt a little bit more, you can see that the entrance is very dark, and Dragar, actually something kind of catches your eye. Above the entrance that goes down into the darkness... You can see something, some kind of words that are scratched in, and it's covered in dirt. So you can't really make out what it is. I'm trying to scratch the dirt away so I can read a little bit closer. Your hand touches this dark, evil statue, and your hand feels the rough stone that's weathered from time and neglect. As you scrape your hand and wipe off the dirt, dirt crumbles fall into the dark tunnel below you. As you make out a word, two words, Firan Zalhonan. And that's where we're going to take our first break.